Hi guys. Um, okay, really super excited to uh, to do some Q and A on this. Uh, wow, what an interesting game. Um, okay, here we go. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> Eve starts us off. It's super on point. Kids and offspring have been a common theme in games that I've played for play, uh, play by play. How would you say Shelter, Among the Sleep, and The Novelist compare to each other in terms of making you care about the kids portrayed? Uh, specifically on that point, I think that's really interesting. So, um, Shelter, Among the Sleep, and The Novelist. Shelter and the novelist uh, are especially interesting because you do not play the children uh, in those games. Among the Sleep and Papoyo uh, are are the other games that have sort of um, themes of childhood and uh, child parent relationships, but you play as the child, uh, and so I'd say like r right there that distinction is super important in terms of the kind of empathy that you develop as a player for a character. The character that you play in a game more so, I, I think that we've had a conversation about anti-heroes. I can't remember. I can't remember if that was uh, uh, with the the play-by-play Q&A. If somebody remembers um, where we might have had that conversation, I'd be really interested to go back and look at it again. Uh, but it also may not have been here. It might have been um, in one of uh, Day Nine's shows, or uh, maybe I'm just thinking about a conversation that I had with somebody else entirely. Uh, the idea of an antihero is common in uh, in like movies. Uh, especially in other forms of literature and, and media. Um, but it's something that's difficult to do in video games because an antihero is somebody who, uh, you know, you respect their um, ultimate goals, but not necessarily their methods or vice versa. Or there's somebody that you... Uh, that sort of drives the story, who is the protagonist of the story, who you are sort of rooting for, but sort of not rooting for, um, and they do things that, that you as a viewer can feel are more... Cat, what are you, what's going on? You're just laying there meowing. I know, hi, hello. Oh, Jesus. Um, the, uh, so a character that you can feel is morally or ethically uh, reprehensible, but still cheer for. Uh, and you can kind of cheer for them because they're doing more good than harm and um, you are passive. You are playing a passive role in a movie, right? Like, uh, you can't do that in a video game in quite the same way. Uh, at least it's very difficult to do it effectively. I'd love to hear examples from people of characters that they have played that they consider anti-heroes. Um, there's definitely, there's more of an element of role play in video games where you can uh, get into the head of a character who is morally gray or uh, ethically ambiguous. Um, but y they can sort of never do things that you are unwilling to do because you're controlling them. Wow, as I said that, I'm thinking of all sorts of counterexamples. Um, but it's still, it's, it's, a, it's a rule of thumb, right? It's, it's sort of like generally true. It's harder to do anti-heroes in video games than it is in, uh, in passive media. Why the hell am I talking about this? Because uh, it all relates to empathy. You Video games, because you are controlling the actions of a character, um, you are very invested in the things that they actually do. Uh, and so the character that you control, you are automatically building empathy with. Um, just through sort of the nature of that relationship. Uh, so. 
when we have children as playable characters in games, games like uh, 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 Among the Sleep or Papoyo, you can't help but feel connected to those characters and view the story from their perspective, uh, at least to some extent. Um, Shelter and the Novelist. <sighs> wow, yeah, Shelter and the Novelist. So in Shelter, my Shelter was entirely about that pro protective instinct, right? It's called Shelter. Uh, the game is about sheltering your young uh, so that they can grow up. Um, the novelist is about this different relationship that a parent has with a child where I cannot help but feel like Dan viewed Tommy fundamentally as an intrusion into his life. Uh, and when he made an effort to uh, spend time with Tommy and, and do things that were important to Tommy, then they could establish some kind of a bond but that was never something that he wanted. He never wanted to spend time with Tommy. Um, it was always sort of, you know, conceding his own desires, his own will to Tommy's and allowing them to spend time together, which felt really strange and very, very different than Shelter. Um, I think that that is a really important part of why the character of Tommy, the child in the novelist, was less, I felt less of a connection to him because I was playing a character who felt less of a connection to him. Um, I also feel like the character of Tommy, oh God, like he wasn't that compelling. Uh, and part of that is, is you know, it, the way that we're viewing him through Dan. Um, but part of it is something else that I can't 100% put my finger on because, um, you know, it's not like there was stellar writing in the, the baby badgers in Shelter. Uh, you know, they had no lines. They had no independent existence, really, except that they would sometimes run off by themselves, and then you would you you would get sort of a sense of them as individuals. But mostly, they just I, you know they they were cute and they followed you around and they depended on you. Uh, and maybe it's that level of dependence. This is an unhealthy thing to say, but um, that level of dependence creates a bond of empathy, I'm, a, a sense of. Um, because this isn't actually maybe an unhealthy thing to say. This is actually just a, a psychologically valid thing to say. Uh, human beings feel connected to uh, people who need them, who are dependent on them. Uh, and if you, for example, uh, can create a sense of dependency, this is what the, the novel Choke is all about, right? Um, whatever that's a tangent uh but okay so dependency creates empathy tommy didn't demonstrate dependency in the same way that uh the badgers did um and so uh i, I felt more connect I, I felt protective of them in a way that i just didn't feel of tommy also um the novelist is a two-parent household and i i feel like there's a, uh, an expectation that those parents are going to share the responsibility for taking care of the, the child. And um, in shelter, you are a single parent and therefore you feel sort of the entire weight of that responsibility. I have no idea if that actually made any sense. Uh, and maybe that's something that I can't speak to not being a parent. All right, I'm going to move on from this question. I don't know that I answered it, but I did uh, talk 
about random things for a long time. So I'm going to call that an answer. Uh, fun bonus question. Um, I know you just got back, but have you seen anything from E3 that has piqued your interest? Uh, Mass Effect 4. Uh, okay, before this started, I made a sort of point system for your choices with main choice being two, compromise being one. You ended up on the last chapter having everyone in the family come to eight, eight, and eight. Do you think that you unintentionally pleased everyone, therefore got the good ending? I think that uh, I got the good ending because I pleased everyone uh, at some kind of a minimum threshold. Uh, it, it, so the, the way that you have um, uh, quantified this is fantastic and it's, it's probably the most straightforward way and therefore most likely the way that the game is also doing it. The game could also be, like, it, it would be slightly more interesting, I think, if the game was weighting uh, these choices differently. So, for example, main choice was worth three or four and the compromise is worth one. Um, uh, something like that would, would change that balance and make it less predictable and... Uh, uh, you know, I think that would be potentially interesting, but I'm guessing that it did exactly what you are describing, uh, and we came in numerically at 8, 8, and 8, uh, or something very close to it, um, and 8 is above their minimum threshold for the good ending. Uh, that is unintentional in the sense that I did not do that math, I did not plan to like get everybody to eight, eight, and eight, um, but it's intentional in the sense that I was deliberately playing towards a balanced uh, set of priorities. Uh, I, in each chapter, I was making decisions largely based on the specific um, circumstances of that chapter, uh, but also partially based on you know who have i been focusing attention on a lot previously and have i been ignoring tommy i don't want to totally ignore tommy maybe i'll give tommy you know some kind of a resolution this chapter just so that he doesn't go forever without getting one um, and so that, that was definitely a factor in my decision making. Uh, and so I think there was some amount of intention, like it's not, it's not entirely coincidental that we ended up in a place where everybody was balanced. I didn't intend for everybody to be perfectly balanced, but um, that's, you know, I got lucky and I hit the target exactly right. Uh, I, there's probably more yeah okay so next question uh you took a relatively balanced approach with the family's priorities it appears that you achieved sufficient scores in all the categories to get the best ending for each do you think that the bar was set too low for each category to get the best ending do you think that it should be possible to get all three of the best endings in one playthrough does this undermine the point of a game that is all about decisions and priorities uh yes 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 and yes uh I, I, I mean, I think that describes exactly what happened. Uh, do, do, should it be possible to get all three of the best endings in one playthrough? No, I, I, yeah, I think that the bar was set way too low for those best endings, considering how the best endings were written. I mean, th those best endings were insane. They were like uh, so ridiculously perfect. Um, I didn't want that. That was that was too good. And I felt like that absolutely detracted from the experience that I had playing the game and making compromises uh, than to get endings, to get any endings that were like, so then from then on, everything was perfect for this person. Uh, like, I, that blows my mind. I also want to note that, like, it's super weird. It, I, 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 I talked about this before, and I was able to sort of justify it in the way that things were framed early on in the game. But with the ending, it makes it really clear that uh, Dan cares about his work, uh, like his job and his novel. Um, uh, and Linda cares about their relationship. Uh, and Tommy 
is an independent person. But Linda's not an independent person. Linda is defined by how good their marriage is. Uh, like, you know, throughout the, the story, she gets uh, her own um, hobbies. They really don't move beyond hobbies. Uh, but she gets her own interests. Uh, but the ending, her ending, is all like, how did their marriage go? Um, I find that kind of problematic. And, I, and I, I attributed it earlier to she, since this is all taking place from Dan's perspective, more or less, um, she represents their marriage and Tommy represents his relationship with Tommy. Um, but Tommy's ending was not really about his relationship with his dad. It was about how he became a famous graphic novelist. Um, so it's super weird that Linda doesn't get any kind of an ending except for, you know, she's super in love with her husband. Uh, okay, that was that was a tangent. Um, yeah, uh, bottom line, I think that the bar was set way too low for all of those. I could see those endings existing if maybe I poured all I like never compromised from a thing like like if we went away for the summer and Dan and Linda spent all of their energy on repairing their marriage and then they had this like amazingly beautiful perfect sick sickeningly perfect love forever story uh ending that I, I, it's just so weird it's so weird it's so weird to me that the endings go into like for the rest of their lives they never had any problems anymore like i i i i feel like the game would have been served better by um and this is where they started out the next phase of their lives like this summer ended and now they have a really strong marriage uh, and they feel really comfortable with one another and, and very comfortable with their relationship. They're no longer thinking about divorce. Uh, they, they, uh, have, they're very strong. Um, not like they never fought again uh, forever and ever. Like that, I, that, I just, it seems so weird. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, absolutely, we shouldn't have been able to get all three of those best endings. It's I, my guess, just based on having played through this once and what that was like, is that for some reason they only created good endings and bad endings for each character. Each character has a good ending, and the good ending is like blissfully good, uh, and a bad ending, and I'm guessing that the bad ending is like miserable. Uh, I have no idea why they did that. I have literally no idea why they did that. Uh, because it's not like those endings are super asset uh, intensive. Um, they're like a paragraph of writing uh, and, um, and a camera move. Like that's all that they are. So each character could have had, you know, 10 endings uh, that were on a, a varying scale of how good they were. Uh, certainly going from what I imagine the bad ending being miserable is to how ridiculously good this like ecstatic joyful ending is, there's a lot of room for uh, gradation in between there. Um, I have no idea why there wasn't more of that and and certainly I feel like making compromises through the whole game and trying to balance everybody's priorities should have gotten us an ending that was pretty good for everybody. Everybody was on, like everybody got what they needed out of this summer, uh, but didn't get everything that they wanted. Uh, and I, I, I feel betrayed. I feel betrayed by the game that the ending doesn't reflect the kind of effort that I put into those decisions uh, and thinking about this as, um, as, as, as trying to create a balance, as trying to create sort of good decisions for all of these characters. I'm getting worked up about this. Um, 
I'm still reeling from the shift in mood from the game hard selling you on the idea that you're making difficult choices uh, that really compromise the agendas of other characters and then concluding by telling you that all of their lives are perfect. I don't even know that I have a question because that's all I can even brain. Yes, 100%. We're on the same page. That was a uh, very articulate, nice job. Um, yeah, mm hmm. Yep. Uh, do you think the genders of the characters ever consciously or unconsciously affected your decisions or loyalties? That's a good question. I don't know. Um, I mean, definitely the genders of the characters came into play uh, in sort of uh, how the story played out and how I related to and interpreted the story. Um, I don't know that it affected my decisions or loyalties. I feel like the game pushed Dan pretty hard as the primary character. He was the one who was making all of the decisions. He's the one that I whispered uh, in his ear. Um, he was the primary character. Uh, that was that. That wasn't my choice. That was the games, uh, that's the way that the game was set up. Um, Linda, I feel like there's, there are some elements of her story that are problematic, um, because she's a woman and she's playing to a very stereotypical, uh, role in the marriage. Um, and she gets moments that I felt really uh, strong. I felt like she was a really good character. Um, and I, I don't mean to suggest that, you know, you can't have a relationship that works that way. I just, I, I'm, I'm upset. I think I'm, I'm upset by the way that the game ended with me feeling like um, she doesn't get her own ending. I feel like I feel really weird about that. I feel like really super weird about that. Everybody gets their own individual ending except for her, and her ending is the relationship. If she were uh, a man, if L the role of Linda was played by a male character, um, I think I would have made the same choices that I did. Uh, I would have felt the same way about the individual scenarios. Um, it would seem really strange to me uh, because there's not a there's not the same kind of like stereotype for it to play into that um, she would be responsible for representing their relationship at her own expense that he would be responsible for representing their relationship at his own expense if that character were male um, but I don't I don't think it would have affected my my decisions or loyalties. Same with Tommy. I don't think Tommy's gender affected the way that I thought about him uh, and the way that I sort of appropriated uh, attention from the family. I gotta think about that, because um, I mean, obviously, the question asks uh, whether it's conscious or unconscious. Uh, I have to really think about whether I was making unconscious decisions um, based on gender. I don't think so. It's not obvious to me that I was, uh, but I do think that the game absolutely uh, engaged with. Um, gender, sometimes in a positive way, sometimes not so much in a positive way. Um, all right. Uh, I said that Shiro unlocked the Mouse Hunter achievement right before uh, I left for another continent for two weeks. Did I come home to a house full of mice? Obviously, I didn't because Shiro is excellent at uh, killing mice. 
Uh, so I wouldn't have come home to a house full of mice, unless it was a house full of dead mice, uh, in which case, um, I don't know where all of those mice would have come from, I guess. In any case, I didn't. I have not seen any mice uh, living or dead um, since the one that she caught uh, right before I left. Not sure where that mouse came from. Um, not aware of anywhere in my apartment where there are, like, mice. Uh, guessing that it somehow slipped in through the front door, which is weird, or came up through, uh, like, the hot water venting area um, or something like that, which seems more likely. Um, I will keep you updated on Shiro's uh, hunting adventures if she has any more. Um, all right. Ugh, I, I want to keep answering questions. At the end of this, I feel almost like we wasted tons of effort and worried for nothing. The ending was super duper positive and yet feels completely unrewarding. Actually, as a result of being so positive, it's really weird how this is happening for me right now. Uh, I, yes, again, uh, agreed. Um, uh, yeah, uh, so this is a great example of in a, uh, in a game that is asking you to engage in role playing to engage with the story on the level of making choices uh, based on the characters, character-based choices, uh, rather than system-based choices. Um, the, uh, the player doesn't always want what's best for the character. In fact, so I think I've talked about this before, maybe on um, one of Day 9's shows. I, I can't remember if I've talked about it here. Uh, I have a theory about role-playing where I define role-playing on a continuum as the extent to which the player is uh, willing or incentivized to make suboptimal choices. Uh, so the extent to which you role-play in a game uh, is, is defined by the choices that you will make, that you that you make, that, um, don't give you the maximal systemic benefit, mechanical benefit, uh, that you make instead based on the, uh, characters or somehow the story on a larger level. Uh, and that, Right there, I mean, uh, what I am saying with that is that uh, you, when you are role playing, you're not trying to get the best ending for the character. You're trying to get the most interesting ending or the right ending for the character. Um, a lot of games, uh, you know, ask you to try to align the player's mechanical objectives with the character's objectives so that um, by playing the game, by sort of following the mechanics of the game and optimizing your play of the game, you are aligning yourself with the character. Uh, and I, that's great, that's fine, that's, that's really important and clever and elegant design uh, and appropriate in a lot of places, uh, but it's not what I would call role playing. Um, role playing specifically is when you are offered a choice uh, and the benefit of making one choice is clearly superior to the other, um, but you choose the suboptimal choice because that's what the character would do. Uh, this is a game that is a potential, has a, a fair bit of role playing potential. Um, because you are making choices for these characters based on what's right for them or what they would do or what makes sense, not necessarily what is going to get you the best ending. 
Uh, and then the fact that I got the best ending, despite the fact that I, I felt like I was role-playing, that I wanted to be role-playing, that I wanted to be making difficult suboptimal decisions for these characters, the fact that each individual character then uh, got this amazingly best ending, um, feels like the game... I, feels like the game didn't respect what I was doing when I was playing it. Um, I am going to bring up, because I keep saying like the best ending for all of the characters, Dan didn't really get the best possible ending, and, and uh, he also didn't get the worst possible ending. He, what I would argue for Dan is that if we had chosen to go to the... if we had taken the job, like, his ending would have been significantly different and probably better, like, more magical. And it's possible... It's actually super possible. It does seem like there could be a better ending where we spent more time on the book and the book turned out really good and it was a hit. Both of those things seemed like it was a given that they weren't going to happen, right? Like, like we literally made the decision not to take the job uh, at the college. And we effectively made the decision not to spend all of our time on the book. Um, so this was the, like, best possible imaginable outcome for Dan, given those two things. Um, and I think that's what I mean when I say that it's a, like, ridiculously, magically optimistic ending for him. Um, oh, there's a straw poll, uh, where chat chose Dan for the final decision. I can't actually load it up, uh, for some reason. I don't have internet? which is weird. Uh, I, oh, I can't, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what to say. I don't know. Um, in retrospect, in retrospect, uh, knowing that the choice was between moving the family to a new town and getting a fucking job uh, versus continuing to try to write for a living, uh, as just a like independent novelist, uh, I I think I also would have chosen Dan uh, if that had been clear to me. So uh, if that was your reasoning, chat, then we're on the same page. Um, if that was not your reasoning, if you had other reasons for choosing Dan um, that you don't think that I have covered or or thought about or considered. Uh, tweet them at me because I am about to sign off and I probably won't see them in the chat. Uh, uh, but send me tweets if, if there's more stuff to talk about or put something up on the play-by-play -play forum, um, which once again is undefinedbehavior.com slash forum. Uh, I'd be interested to hear why people chose differently than I did. Um, I'm going to do one more question. Uh, oh, and I'm, my last question is going to be uh, Cage Tiger challenging me on the rambling thing that I said at the beginning of this Q&A. Thank you. Uh, I think your thesis on the anti-hero thing here precludes the magic circle concept in games. The rules are different, so you can still do things that you don't necessarily agree with or consider morally right. Yeah, you're, you're totally right, and I'm thinking about um, games like, uh, okay, well, spoiler alert for, uh, uh, Knights of the Old Republic, the original game that came out 15 or 20 years ago. Um, th there's, there's a beautiful, beautiful moment in that game where, uh, you take the, the dark side path, uh, and... Um, there's a mechanic in Knights of the Old Republic that is problematic in a lot of ways, but uh, systemically kind of really elegant, where um, 
once you start making dark side choices or light side choices, uh, you're, it's on a continuum, right? So every dark side choice that you make moves you further towards the dark side. Uh, and if you are all the way on the dark side, then every light side choice you make moves you closer to the center, uh, closer to sort of neutral. Um, kitten, please, off of the desk. Thank you. Um, you get more powerful the more extreme you are. So if you choose light side as a path, the further you are on the light side, the more powerful you are. And if you ever make a dark side choice, that will move you towards the center and make you less powerful. Uh, this is problematic in the game because once you choose a path, you're effectively barred from ever changing your path. You can't really switch from light side to dark side or vice versa because you make yourself so, it, you're high, extraordinarily disincentivized from doing so. Unless you're role playing and you're willing to make suboptimal decisions, uh, and then you might do that. But the game incentivizes you to stick to a path. Uh, what that means is if you choose dark side, then at the end of the game, you once you've like maxed out your dark side, um, the game starts offering you really, really, really gross decisions to make. Uh, it, it gives you like things that you do not want to do that you are highly incentivized to do because not doing them will move you away from the dark side. Uh, and you will become less powerful. Uh, and so some of the stuff that you do involves uh, forcing party members to murder other party members uh, and um, it's really kind of amazing when that happens in a like terrible, ugly way. Um, but you do it. I mean, I did it, uh, and it was extremely powerful, and uh, it made me feel like super dirty. Uh, but it was it's it directly counter contradicts the the point that I was making about how you can't have anti heroes as playable characters in games. Like that was a total anti hero move, uh, where that was a character who. Uh, was not ethically bound to do the right thing in any given situation because uh, her priorities were higher than the given situation. And because of the way the mechanics of light side, dark side work, she had to uh, like really fuck up this relationship between people and, and uh, commit murder and do all of these really terrible things uh, in order to save the galaxy. 100% um, anti-hero. Disregard everything that I said, I guess, about anti-heroes. Um, I'm going to think more about that because I, I do feel like there's something to... A difference between how anti-heroes are done or can be done in games versus passive media um, but but for the time being I guess the only thing to take out of that is you do regardless of who they are the nature of a game is to build empathy with the playable character and you can build empathy with an anti-hero I think that's that's the point that's where I got it wrong um, but that, that idea of building empathy, I think that point still stands. Okay. Awesome. Um, thanks everybody. This was great. This was a ton of fun. Uh, I am super glad to be, uh, to be back, to be doing this again, um, to have finished The Novelist. I thought it was a really interesting game. I thought it had a, a, a super interesting premise. Um, I thought that the me mechanics were, were very cool in a lot of ways. Uh, I felt like the writing throughout the game left something to be desired and it really fell apart at the end. Uh, and those resolutions were, were so disappointing. Um, 
but in general, it was a fascinating game. So I, I hope that you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, I don't have the next game lined up. Um, I do have uh, several that I am looking at that I uh, want to choose from. I will put up a straw poll, uh, but I don't have it ready yet. Um, so check out my uh, Twitter, um, at NDEF. Uh, for that link. Um, I will also put it up on the forum. Um, would love to get your input. I think I'm going to do it the same way as last time because that was just uh, fun um, uh, where I will put up descriptions of the games uh, and then everybody can vote on one uh, or vote for however many they want and, uh, and then once there's a winner I'll reveal what the actual game is. Um, I don't know if that's the best way to do it, but uh, I, I feel like uh, some kind of a mischievous elf when I do that, so I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Um, I, I, I think that there's lots of community stuff going on, um, but I have been out of the loop for the last couple weeks, so I think that there are... Um, uh, Feedback Force podcasts up on the forum. You can find them there. Uh, they've been um, playing a bunch of games and talking about them. Uh, uh, Brothers was the first one, and and then there was a second one that I missed and or I, I haven't caught yet. Um, so sorry, guys. But but uh, check that out. Um, I think there's a new one just this week, and there will be another one before next Wednesday. Um, uh, Sunday Game Club uh, with Thanarod. I don't know what they've been doing for the last couple weeks. I know that he's been playing Alan Wake uh, and finished it. Um, uh, oh, Feedback Force just posted about Magicka, and the next game is Reus, uh, which I have not played and super kind of want to play. So um, play Reus and uh, check back in two weeks, maybe, uh, for the next Feedback Force. Um, yeah, uh, and, and Sunday Game Club, uh, I maybe is still playing Kingdom Hearts? not certain um uh i'm intrigued that there is a new kingdom hearts uh, game coming out though um and then uh cage tiger uh has started doing her own streaming on i believe saturdays um uh which i was out of town for the last one uh but she's playing uh final fantasy 6 uh so check that out uh, on Saturday, Cage Tiger, tell me the time. I don't know what the time is. Um, uh, 8 p.m. Pacific. So tune in for that. Sorry, that was kind of rambly uh, and uh, and drawn out because I don't know what the hell's going on in the community this week because I've been out of town. But now I'm back. Really excited about it. Uh, can't wait to uh, re-engage with you guys, and I'm looking forward to whatever we play next week. Um, so I'll see you then. Uh, have a good night.